You know, when Christ repeats anything, I believe that we should stop, take notice, pay close attention to what he's trying to get us to understand and really get a grasp on it. Well, join me as we go to Matthew 6 and we'll see what our Lord repeats and wants us to understand and apply to our lives. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome soldiers of Christ. In this video we're coming out of the text of Matthew 6, 24 through 34. And Christ is addressing the issue of worry, anxiety. Those terms, take no thought or taken thought or take you thought. It means not, not meaning don't think about things. It just means don't worry or be anxious over those things. Well, let's get right into the text, shall we? It's Matthew 6, starting in verse 24. And again, this is Christ speaking. And as I said in the intro, Christ is repeating things here. So let's take notice of what our Lord is trying to get us to grasp and understand. So please listen carefully as I read. Christ says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, and what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewither? Shall we be clothed? For after all these things did the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now again, in, this, in these verses, Christ is repeating the phrase, take no thought. He says it three times. Then he says the terms take or thought twice in question form. So he, he repeats this five times. Now I know people have a tendency of not wanting to hear things repeated, but if Christ is repeating something, it's very important that we take notice. Now I may even repeat a lot of things in this video. I may have to cut some things out because some people don't like to hear things repeated. Well, I heard you the first time, you don't have to repeat it. But Christ begins, he says, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, a lot of people, I guess in a way you can serve two masters. But what Christ is saying, if you try to serve two masters, which means the ways of the world or God, you're going to end up holding on to one. You're going to end up loving the one and hating the other. You're going to love the ways of the world and you're going to end up hating God because you think he's just trying to, you know, put, throw a wrench into your fun or not wanting you, wanting you to be a success. And if you hold on to the world, you're going to end up loving it and you're going to despise God because you're going to say that he's trying to just stop me from having fun. He's trying to stop me from doing what I enjoy. Now we read in James 4, 4, that if you are a friend to the world, you are an enemy of God. But now that you are in Christ, you are no longer an enemy of God. We read in Romans 5, 1, that therefore by your faith, you are justified. And you now have peace with God through your Lord Jesus Christ, which that peace with God is meaning you are no longer an enemy of God, but a child. But he's saying, if you try to serve these two masters, you're going to end up despising one. You're going to hate the one. You're going to love one. You're going to hold on to one, but you're not going to be able to serve the other. And then that term, he says, you can't serve God or mammon. And mammon is wealth, material wealth, or 
or just wealth. And it can also be like a spirit that promises wealth. Look, you focus on me and I'll give you all you need. I'll give you all you desire, but you can't serve mammon. Now Christ isn't saying he, he's, he's despising wealth. There's a lot of wealthy people that do good things with their money, but this is, it's a greed that comes from wanting more money and more money. That's where your heart is. That's where your focus is on what you have, your material things, your wealth, your material wealth, the things you have, and it's through greed. And if that's where your heart is, we read in 1 Timothy 6, 10, that the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money, not money is the root of all evil, but it's the love of money. And this love of money will cause you to run over people. It'll cause you to take advantage of people. It'll cause you to just pay no, have no consideration to the needs of others, but it will only just build on your greed to want more, want more, want more. You will never be satisfied and it leads to evil. And it can also lead to murder. People will kill to have more money. But if it doesn't even reach that point, it's just they run all over people and they take advantage of people only to increase their own wealth. That's what Jesus is meaning here. If your love is on money, your love won't be on God. Your love won't be on Christ, who is your master, who God has set you over as your master. You can't serve the world and serve Christ at the same time. You can't serve the world. You can't go into the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, your own desires and serve God at the same time. You can't do it, it's not possible. Now he goes on in verses, in the next 10 verses, this is where he starts repeating things. At verse 25 it says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for, the, for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? And Christ is not telling us, look, don't even think about your life. It's not what he's saying. We can be concerned over our life. In fact, it's good to plan for the future. It's good to plan, make plans, that's wise. But what he's saying here, that take no thought is meaning, don't worry. Don't be anxious over the situations in your life. Trust God, trust who you are in Christ. That's what he's meaning. Take no thought for this life. Don't worry, stop worrying. Stop being so anxious over things that probably won't happen in, in, in the first place. You know, I've heard plenty of people say that 90% of the things you worry about won't happen. And the 10% that does happen is your fault. You worry about it so much that you actually bring it on to yourself. You have all this anxiety over what? Over life? Over situations that's coming? So don't worry over things or be anxious of what the future holds. You know, we read in Philippians, Four, six through seven, he said, Paul writes, he says, be careful for nothing or don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And when you do this, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, and during this time that Christ, of Christ, he knew that people didn't even know when their next meal was coming. They didn't know if they were gonna to go to bed warm or cold. They didn't know if they were gonna have clothes to stay warm. They were poor, they were in poverty. Jesus knew this. Christ is using food and drink and clothing as metaphors for essential things. He said, don't worry about these things so much. There's more to life than food and drink and, and clothes. But in today's society, they spend more time thinking about where they're gonna eat, what they're gonna eat, what they're gonna put on. People spend hours shopping in a mall and just come out with one perfect outfit. Or they may spend hours in the morning, on Sunday mornings before they go to church, getting ready, trying to you know, make themselves look presentable or make themselves look good, but they don't spend not one minute in prayer. And that's what Jesus is meaning here. He said, don't think so much about these things. Don't worry about them. Don't be anxious of the essential things because it's God who is going to provide for you. Then he's saying this life is more important. There's more important things in this, this life than how you look, what you wear, what you eat, what you drink. Then people worry about everything. What's going to happen? What's going to come up in the future? How am I going to deal with this situation? But they give no thought and they let those worries and anxieties take their focus off of God. 
And God is the one who can actually get them out of this situation because he is more than able to handle it. We can't handle a lot of things. And again, we can be concerned over things, which is wise. It's wise to be concerned over your future and plan for tomorrow or for your life for the future. But when you let worry and anxiety come into that, it takes your focus off of God. Then Christ begins to give some examples here. He says in verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air, the birds, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your, your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Christ is speaking of these birds. They don't plant, they don't harvest, they don't reap, they don't store up for another day. They live day by day. And Father, our Father cares for them. They, he feeds them. How much better are you? How much more precious to God are you than these birds? And he still provides for these birds. So if he provides for the birds, he's going to provide for you because you are more precious to him than they are. And that's what Christ is meaning here. Then Christ asks a question. He asks a question here in, 20, in verse 27. He says, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Which he means, when you worry and are anxious, do you think that worry and anxiety is actually going to add to your life? Can you add one year more to your life by worrying and being anxious over what the future holds? Of course you cannot. In fact, you know, think about this. Anxiety does not empty tomorrow tomorrow of its trials, it simply empties today of its joy. Anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, it empties today of its strength. So that worry and anxiety you have today about tomorrow, it's only robbing you of joy today. You spend more time thinking about what's coming than you do the moment that you're living in right now. You forget, I'm in Christ, that means that God is now my Father, and my Father cares for me. He will provide for me. I can trust Him because He is faithful and He is trustworthy, and He'll provide all these essentials I need. I don't have to think so much and worry and be anxious over so much, so much stuff that I've been worrying and anxious over when my Father in heaven, through my Lord Jesus Christ, will provide for me. He's going to look after you when He's in control. He holds you, therefore he holds your future. And by worrying, you're not adding any time to your life. In fact, you're destroying it. You're actually taking time off of your life by worrying. Now that's probably making you worry right there. We're human, we're gonna worry, but Christ is repeating these things. Don't worry, don't be anxious. Trust God, rely on God, for he cares about you. Then in verses 28 through 30, he gives another example, he says, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon and all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? He's saying that these lilies, they don't toil, they don't do strenuous labor. They don't spin and make thread to make their own clothes, yet God clothes them. And he, he gives the comparison of Solomon, who was a king. He had all these fine linens and these silks and whatever it may have been. But he says, even Solomon in all his glory and all these great things that he wore was not arrayed like one of these. The lilies of the field were clothed better than the king, King Solomon. <laughs> and he's making the point, if God clothes them, the grass, the flowers, which is here and gone, taken up, thrown into the fires, temporary. How much more so will he provide for you? If he can provide for something that's temporary, that's a part of nature, how much more so will he provide for you? Because he cares more for you than he does for nature. You are more precious to him than it is for nature. Consider this, God spoke things into existence, which includes those lilies of the field the grass of the field, the nature that you see around you. He spoke it into existence, but when it came to man, he formed man with his hands. He forms you in your mother's womb. His hands are holding you. You were touched by God, so you are precious to God. And if he takes care of his creation that he's spoken to his instance, how much more so will he take care of you who he himself formed with his own hands? He will provide for you. 
and Christ ends that, O ye of little faith, meaning you're not really trusting God to provide for you whenever he provides for all of his creation. You're saying that God can't handle this situation, so you're going to take it into your own hands instead of placing it in his hands, who is more than able to take care of it and handle it, who is always in control. But instead, you're allowing this worry and this anxiety and this stress about things to come, things now, things present, whatever, what have you, and you're, you're taking your focus off of God. Christ says in 31, you know, now that I've told you all this, now that you know that God provides for his creation and he also provides for you because you are more precious to him than his creation than those birds of the air than those lilies of the field than those that grass of the field he says in verse 31 therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or whither all shall we be clothed for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things and again christ is using the food drink and clothed metaphor, clothing metaphor is these are the essentials of life that your heavenly father will provide. And now that you know that he provides for the birds, the flowers, the creation, how much more so will he provide for you? Verse 32, he says, for after all these things that the Gentiles seek, the world worries about these things. They worry about if we're going to have food, if we're going to have drink, if we're going to have money, if we're going to have this or that, or they worry about the future because they really have no hope, no solid foundational hope that they can really rely on. They have to rely on themselves. That's all they have, really. That's what they believe all they have. All I have is myself. If I don't do it, it won't get done. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. But for us who are in Christ, we have a heavenly father who cares for us, who loves us, who sees us as his precious children, and he will provide for us. Christ is saying, look to God, trust in God, have faith in God. And now that we have all these writings, all this truth in scripture, we know that we are God's children through his son, Jesus Christ. And if we are in Christ, God will provide all we need, all these essentials. Don't worry about what you're going to drink, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where all this is going to come from. You know, these are the essentials of life that your father in heaven will provide for you. But this is what you must be focused on he says in verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you we seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness a lot of people like to leave out that part but we seek god's kingdom and his righteousness we seek god's kingdom through prayer and we seek his righteousness through prayer then we live it out and when we seek god's kingdom and his righteousness first through prayer will be content in everything that comes up in our life. So let's trust in him, have our faith in him, that he is gonna provide all we need. And let's not worry or be anxious about obtaining it for ourselves when our heavenly father has promised that he will give it unto us. It says it there, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I mean, let's think on heavenly things. This life is temporary. We are but grass of the field. We're here today, we're gone tomorrow. We are like a dust in the wind. We're just here today, gone tomorrow. This life is temporary, but we have an eternal life with our Lord Jesus Christ in the kingdom of the Father. Let's think of that. You know, a lot of people focus so much on the struggle and the pain of this life that they forget that there's an eternal life, that the sufferings of this world won't even compare to that one, to that eternal glory that will be revealed in us through our Lord Jesus Christ. But we read in Colossians 3, 1 through 2, Paul writes, it says, if, the, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek these things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on those things, on things above, not on things of this earth. Now again, we could be concerned about things of this earth. We have to be because we live here, but we are separated from this world, the ways of this world, and we are part of a heavenly kingdom, God's kingdom. We are children in the kingdom of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us not be really entangled in the ways of this world, but let us be heavenly minded. Let us be focused, minded, mindful of things above where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. And let us not be like the world who is consumed by worry and anxiety. I mean, look at all the things that's going on in this world today. 
different strands of COVID is coming up. People are worried about getting the vaccine. They're worried about not getting the vaccine. They're worried about, well, if I get this, something's going to happen to me. Something's going to happen to my family, my children, my mom, my dad. They're so worried and full of an anxiousness, anxiety, that they can't get away from it. And they sink into despair. But Paul is writing in Colossians 3 that we should be heavenly minded. Yes, we should be concerned about these things and take precautions to make sure that we're healthy and to make sure that our family is taken care of and to make sure that things are in order and plan for the future. But we shouldn't be worried or full of anxiety over the future and what the future holds when God holds us in the palm of his hands, when Christ has sheltered us in God's hands with his hands. And there's nothing that can rip us from those hands. So why should we worry? Why should we have anxiety? Why should we have fear when the God of all power is with us and for us? Let's not be like the world that's consumed with worry and anxiety. Let us focus on our Heavenly Father who provides all we need and who is in control of our future, of our life. Our life is no longer our own. We belong to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is our master. Christ is our Lord and our King. And if you think about it, if we have a master, that means we are slaves to Christ, but we are not bound slaves. We are freed slaves. And we who are in Christ are called to something so much greater than worrying about food, drink, or what we're going to wear, spending hours at a mall, just worrying about painting ourselves up, looking nice for the world. When Christ said, you have all this that is provided for you by your father you don't have to worry or be anxious over it seek first the kingdom of god and the righteousness of god and live it out and when you do you'll be content you'll be content with everything you have or don't have in this life let us have the same mindset that paul writes about in philippians 4. he writes in philippians 4 11 through 13 now that i speak in respect of want or not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Paul is saying that he has learned to be content satisfied at peace in whatever situation he's in paul has been praised and he's also been put down slandered despised by many he's had wealth and he's suffered poverty he's been he's had everything he's needed and he's also had nothing paul is writing this this letter to the philippians in prison He's under house arrest. And this man is saying, I have learned to be content in whatever situation I am in. It does not matter what situation I'm in. If I have food or I don't have food. If I have wealth or I am in poverty. If I am lifted up or I am put down to the ground. It doesn't matter because he knows that he can do all things through Christ who gives him the strength to face any situation this life has to throw at him. And you can have this same confidence as well. It doesn't matter what this life throws at you. It doesn't matter what you face in this life because you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength to face it. You can face anything with Christ because it is his strength, not your strength. Christ after in verse 34 said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this will be given unto you. All these things will be given added unto you. It says in verse 34, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He says, you seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't be full of stress and worry and anxiety about what the future holds whenever God holds it in his hands. God is in control. He is in control of you. He's in control of your future. He's in control of your life. He's in control of all things so don't worry don't be anxious then he adds in there it says besides tomorrow's gonna worry about itself let tomorrow worry about itself there's more trouble in this day to be concerned over than having to add unnecessary worry unnecessary stress unnecessary anxiety that's only gonna rob you of joy today you gotta worry about itself let it worry about itself there's more trouble in today to be concerned over than having to worry about tomorrow Christ is saying, do not worry. Do not be anxious over what's coming because you were healed by God. 
You are in Christ. You have you have no need to worry or be anxious over anything that's, anything that's coming at you. However, we are human. We are going to worry. Anxiety is going to build up in us. This stress about the future, our lives now, our family, every little situation. We're going to worry. We're going to be stressed out. We're going to come to the point where anxiety is going to build up. But let's do what Peter writes in 1 Peter 5. Now he writes in verse 6, he says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. That humble yourselves means rely on God. Let him guide you. Let him let him be your strength. Don't try to do it on your own. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Go from his guidance and rely on his strength and the strength that he has placed in you through his son, Jesus Christ. It's not your strength. It's the strength of Christ. And he says you will be exalted in due time, which means when the time is right, all those who humble themselves will be exalted. And when Christ returns, you will be glorified with Christ. And that's a promise. But then he goes on. He writes in 1 Peter 5, verse 7, he says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Speaking of God, we take all of our worry, all of our anxiety, all of our stress, all these things that are just really grasping us and is causing us to slip into this dark place or into despair, we cast that upon God because he can bear it and because he cares enough to hear us and he cares enough to help us cast all your worry and stress and anxiety upon God who cares about you. You are his beloved child who is precious to him, more precious than the fowls of the air, more precious than the lilies of the field or the grass of the field or the flowers or all this nature. You're more precious to him because he's the one who formed you with his hands. Therefore, you are precious to him, his beloved child, and he cares for you. So cast your cares, worry, stress, anxiety upon him and stop trying to deal with it on your own because that worry and anxiety and stress is only destructive. It's a silent killer. It's putting weight on you that you're not meant to carry. And that takes your focus off of God. It takes your focus off of Christ. Remember what happened to Peter when he was in the boat, the storm was going and he saw Christ walking on, on the water and he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you. And Christ said, well, come on. So Peter stepped out of the boat. He got on the water. He was heading towards Christ. And then he started looking around at the storm and the waves. Immediately, he began to sink. And what did he say? Lord, save me. And as soon as he said, Lord, save me, Christ reached down, grabbed his hand, pulled him out of the water, and he walked on the water with Christ. It was through the strength of Christ that Peter wasn't overtaken by the waves. And this storm in your life right now, these the lightning is popping around you and these waves are fixing to crash over you and take you under. Cry out to Christ, who through his strength will give you the power to walk on those waves. Don't be consumed by this and, and don't worry. Stop worrying. Don't be anxious. Fear not, for God is with you and Christ is in you. And God is holding you. And it's Christ who walks with you. And even when you cannot walk, he scoops you up in his arms and he carries you. Don't fear. Stop worrying. Stop being anxious over things that may never even happen. Cry out to Christ. Cast your cares upon God. And just know that Christ walks with you. He walks with you, he carries you, he strengthens you. And stop worrying and stressing over things and being anxious over things. Fear not, for God your Father is holding you. And Christ your Lord is holding you. Find peace and joy and comfort in that, because it is true. Please allow me to pray for you. Father, I thank you for this text. I thank you for the words that Christ spoke. He repeated these things. So it's very important that we take notice and try to understand what he's trying to get us to understand. Get it into our thick heads that we don't need to worry. We don't need to be anxious about the future because you hold our future. You hold us. So therefore, why should we worry? Why should we be full of anxiety? Father, thank you for this promise. 
that if we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, that all these things will be added unto us. We don't have to worry about it. You're in control. Father, I pray for that one that's watching. They may be consumed with worry and anxiety and stress that is really unnecessary. They're worried about things that may never happen. Father, give them a peace and comfort in their hearts, in their minds, that you are with them, that you hold them. You hold them, you hold their family, you hold their future. And help them, Father. Remove that worry and stress and anxiety that is really consuming them and causing them to go into a dark place. Father, shine your light, your brilliant light into that and drive that darkness away. Restore their joy and peace. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in their lives. And I pray, Father, that you hold them and keep them. Surround them with your grace and surround them with your mercy and fill them with your love and make your great love known to them. Again, I thank you and I love you. And I pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope you stuck with me this far, and I pray that this has been an encouragement to you, and I pray that it's challenged you to not worry, to not be full of anxiety over things that may never even happen. If this was some encouragement to you, please like the video. It really does help the channel. It gives others a chance uh, to be recommended this video and watch it. Maybe they, God can use it in their lives to encourage them as well. Well, I pray that God blesses you. And may the grace and mercy of Christ Jesus the Lord be with you always.